Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome and thank you for joining today's session. My name is Yan. I am product manager in Cisco product management team. I am in charge of Cisco Oxspace environment management product. The session is for introducing Oxspace environment management service public APIs. In the session, we will provide introduction for one public API. This is the agenda for today's session. It will include WAM overview for providing brief introduction for WAM products. And we will also provide overview introduction for WAM public APIs. Then we will set step into more detail. We will introduce WAM public API architecture for introducing how we build up WAM API framework. Next, we will introduce how to design WAM public APIs such as design model, API authorization. We also will introduce how to deploy WAM APIs. The last topic is how to do troubleshooting for WAM public API. What is Workspace Environment Management Service? Workspace Environment Management Service use intelligent resource management and profile management technologies to deliver the best possible performance, desktop logging, and application response times for Cisco virtual apps and desktops deployments. It can provide resource management to provide the best experience for users. When service monitor and analyze user and application behavior in real time, and then intelligent adjust RAM, CPU, and I.O. in the user workspace environment. It can also provide profile management to deliver the best possible logging performance. WAM service replaces Windows group policy object logging scripts with an agent deployed on each virtual machine or physical servers. The agent is multi-thread and applies changes to user environments only when required. Issue that users always have access to their desktop as quickly as possible. There are many components are hosted in Cisco Cloud and administrated by Cisco as part of the service. The infrastructure services are installed on a multiple session operating system. They synchronize multiple backend components with front end components. We ensure that those components are provided on Cisco's cloud. You can use the administration console to manage your user environments using your web browser. The administration console is hosted on a Cisco cloud-based Cisco virtual apps server. Web service settings are stored in Azure Circle database service. Deployed in Elastic Pool, this component is managed by Cisco. The following components are managed in each resource location by the customer and the partners. The WAM service agent connects to the WAM infrastructure services and enforce settings you configure in the administration console. All communications are over HTTPS using the Cisco Cloud messaging service. You can deploy the agent and the virtual delivery agent. Doing so lets you manage single session or multi-session environments. You can also deploy an agent on a physical Windows endpoint. All agents use local cache. Ensure that agent can continue using the latest settings if network connection is not available. WAM service requires access to your Active Directory to push settings for domain-joint cases. The infrastructure service communicating with your Active Directory using the Cisco Cloud Identity Service. The Cisco Cloud connector is required to allow machines 
angular resource locations to communicating with Swiss Cloud. Configure Swiss Cloud connector at least one machine in every resource location you are using. For continuous availability, configure multiple cloud connectors in each of your resource locations. We suggest at least two cloud connectors in each resource location to ensure high availability. If one cloud connector in each resource location is unavailable, the other cloud connectors can maintain the connection. Okay, here's one public API overview. There are multiple types for APIs. The first one is public APIs. It is for cloud customer accessible. It requires authorization, such as a bad token and service key for authorization purpose. It can support multi-tenant. The second one is internal APIs. It is for switch product integration purpose. It requires authorization only with service key for authorization purpose. It can also support multi-tenant. The third one is automation APIs. It is for automation only. It requires authorization only with service key for authorization purpose. It can support multi-tenant and single tenant. For single tenant APIs, it can deploy for each VM console. The URL is different for each custom. And it is for automation only. For multi-tenant APIs, it can deploy in API pool. The URL is unified for each customer. And it is for customer access. Here's the web API architecture for single tenant mode. Suppose that we have three customers. And the web infrastructure service is a single tenant mode. Web API service is single tenant mode. And web admin administration console is also single tenant mode. When customer Tianhe wants to access server, it will use URL, which is calculating based on customer IDs. And access to HA proxy for a single tenant API. The traffic will route to Tianhe's web console virtual machine. And the API service will notify broken after receiving the request. And then broker will update the Tianhe's database. Here's the WAM API architecture for multi-tenant mode. Suppose that we have uh, three customers and the WAM infrastructure service is multi-tenant mode. WAM API service is also multi-tenant mode and will use API pool virtual machines. When customer Tianhe wants to access servers, it will use URL, which include customer ID, and access to HA proxy, and then the traffic will route to API pro virtual machines. And the API service will notify a broker after receiving the request. And then the broker will update the Tianhe database based on request handler. Here's the slide what how we WIM API do authorization. Since the cloud authorization provides two types. One is bare token, the other is service key. Bear token is for customer accessible, where service key is for internal access such as a product integration. When API service receives the API request, the API service will send authorization handler to Sysl Cloud authorization service. It is based on bear token or service key. The Sysl Cloud auth auth service 
will verify identity and then send back verification result to API service. Then API service will make a further decision based on verification result, either allow access or denied access. How we generate bear token? The first step is generating client in Cisco Cloud. And then send the client to Cisco Cloud or service to retrieve bear token. And then append the bear token in hand of your API request. And how we generate a service key? The first step is obtaining the pri private key of touched web subscription. And then sign the URL using the private key. And then upon the signature of the service key in hand of your API request. Here's a multi-tenant public API overview. We have four groups of multi-tenant public APIs. The first one is a web comprehensive set. The second one is user level AD object. The third one is machine level AD object. And the last one is system optimization. For a configuration set, we can support eight APIs. The first one is query. It will use get method. It is based on name and ID. It will be filtered based on name and ID for the query result. The second one is query BILD. It will also use get method. It is based on ID only, the ID of the resource you want to query the site. The third one is create. It will use post method. The site will create it based on name and description. The fourth one is update. It will use put method. The site will be updated based on the name and the description as well as site ID. The fifth one is delete. It will use a delete method. The site will be deleted based on site ID. The sixth one is export. It will use get method. The site will be exported based on site ID and name. The service one is import. It will use post method. The site will be imported based on site ID and name. The last one is replicate. It will use post method. The site will be replicated based on site ID and name. For user level AD object, we can support five APIs. The first one is query. It will use get method. It is based on seed, site ID, and ID. It will be filtered based on those parameters for the query result. The second one is query BYLD. It will also use get method. It is only based on ID. ID. The ID of the resource you want to query. The third one is create. It will use post method. The objects will be created. The required parameters will include seed, type, name, as well as site ID. The fourth one is update. It will use put method. The site will be updated based on transaction ID as well as uh, customer IDs. The fifth one is delete. It will use a delete method. The site will be deleted based on IDs. For machine level AD object, it should be similar as user level AD object. We can support five APIs. The first one is query. It will use get method. It is based on seed, site ID, and ID. It will be filtered based on those parameters for the query result. The second one is query BYID. It will also use get method. 
it is based on ID only. The ID of the resource you want to query. The third one is create. It will use post method. The objects will be created. The required parameters will include seed, type, name, as well as site ID. The fourth one is update. It will use put method. The site will be updated based on transaction ID and custom IDs. The fifth one is delete. It will use delete method. The site will be deleted based on IDs. For system optimization, it will support two APIs. The first one is query. It will use get method. The second one is query by ID. It will also use get method. It is based on ID only. The ID of the resource you want to query. The fourth one is update. It will use put method. The site will be updated based on transaction ID and custom IDs. Here is the example with query configuration set. We can query all configuration sets by invoking the API. But please note that you should specify the accept handle as application dash JSON. Or you might get a re response with code 466. It means that not acceptable. If you don't specify Cisco transaction ID hand, the random one will be generated automatically. You will get a 401 response. If the bear token is missing or invalid. This is response sample. Please note that if the query is successful, you will get 200 response with the result in body. You will get a 503 response if an internet server error occurs. Then we can check how to design web public APIs. Here is the supported property type list in API mode. For data types, we can support int, long, float, double, bool, ring. We also can support GUID, date time, enum, and object. The next step is confirm the types of your APIs. The resource management is by CRUD. Experience fast and convenient deployment by inheriting class based operation with the parameter API model and database model. For example, in a table, you can use query all entities function for query all entities. And you can also use create entity function for creating one entity. The similar operation for delete, create, and restoration operation. Here are other functions. And invoking the following functions, they are implemented automatically. For example, you can use connection model for query entities by Filter. Use query model BID for query one specified entity. Using create model for create an entity. Similar operation for update and delete functions. Now here's how we deploy web public APIs. The API deployment complete automa automatically by scripts. 
the processes are as following. The first step is copy API binaries to touched folder. The second step is to configure API service by modifying public API service dot dot configure files. The third step is using command line public API service install to install API as a Windows service. Then you can find a service Cisco Web API SVC in running status. The display name for this file is Cisco Web Public API Service. And then you should open browser and enter URL. In Swagger, documentation is displayed. The API deployment completes successfully. Please note that every time you update the configuration file, you should restart the API service to enable the changes to take effect. Here's the API configurations for web public APIs. For example, we have setting which is named as a, a cloud service or not. It means whether the API service is in cloud or not. We also have authorized also, also enable settings. It means whether the API authorization is enabled or not. We use those settings for deploying web public APIs. Then we can check how to troubleshooting if there's any issues for web public APIs. We can check API logs on Splunk by command by command line for identifying the root cause. And we also can detect an API bug. If there is an internal server error, such as 503, response as below. You may take it as an API bug. You can go to Splunk logs to see the details of the unhandled exceptions. Okay, I think we finished today's session. Thanks a lot for your time.